Hey everybody. Well, we are finally here. Finally to the end of the book of Genesis. And uh, we see here the last few chapters that Jacob, after he sees Joseph, after God fulfills his promise, that he speaks to the inheritance of each of his children. And I'll encourage you to read that and study it because it's uh, it's it's truly a uh, message from God through Jacob because as he describes what each of these tribes of Israel will be, it, uh, it's truly amazing. But as we go on and uh, after Jacob dies and they have the, you know, they take him back to bury him with his fathers. And they have the time of mourning. The brothers begin to become concerned. They're worried that now that their father's dead, that Joseph will exact his revenge on them. But we see a very well-known verse here at the end of Genesis where Joseph tells him, you know, for his brothers, I know that what you meant for me as evil, that God used it as good. Your plans for me didn't matter. It was always God's plan that would be fulfilled. And he used your wickedness to fulfill it. So, and as we come to the end, we see that Joseph lives to 110, and then he passes. But he makes his children and his grandchildren and the people of Israel promise to take him back and bury him in the land that God had promised. So they embalm him, keep him intact to bury him until the promise is fulfilled. So we've went through the whole book of Genesis. We've drudged through. If you've been here from the beginning and you're still here, I hope that you've learn something, but more importantly, I hope that God has revealed something to you. We started Genesis with the beginning, with a new life. We started with life, and we ended Genesis with death. And as I was thinking about this this morning as I was working out, isn't it amazing how the book of Genesis is really the pattern for the whole Bible. We begin with God's blessing, a new life, a perfect life, and we mess it up and God redeems us. We mess it up and God redeems us. And we mess it up and God redeems us. And at the end, just like at the end of the Bible, we're waiting for God's promise to be fulfilled and for us to be in the place that he intended for us to be to start with which is right by him we're waiting for that moment at the end of the book of revelation when we are in a perfect i don't want to call it paradise that seems to uh downplay what it is i don't think we have a word to describe what it will be like to be in the presence of god with no sin we really won't be able to, we can't describe it in earthly terms. But that's what we see. We see God in the book of Genesis providing life and providing redemption each and every time. Never cutting off his promise. From Adam to Noah to Abram, to Isaac, to Jacob, 
to Jacob's descendants. God providing a way for us to have relationship with Him. And us fulfilling our role in this, which is to mess it up each and every time. You know, we see that in the beginning, Adam, through the lineage of Seth, was to continue on. But we messed that up through our wickedness. And God had to wipe us out. And we had Noah. And we continued on. And we decided, you know what? We, we're going to build something and make us great so everybody can look at us. And then the Tower of Babel came. And we had to be strong and our language is confused. But even out of that, God provided a way through Abraham. And that way continues on today. We can see it. We went through Abraham, through Isaac, through Jacob. And then we go through Judah, as we learn at the end of Genesis. And then we've got lots of things that come through that way. All the way. God always providing a way through the least expected way. You know, think about Judah and how wicked we talked about he was. God provided a way all the way down to Rahab, the prostitute, who was, <clears throat> who would be the lineage that David would come from, who would be the lineage that Jesus Christ would come from. Always God keeping his covenant through each of those individuals and through their families. And Jesus Christ providing a new covenant and God keeping that covenant today through you and through me. We are God's covenant people. We are God's Israel. The time of Israel has been put on pause. We know as we read the Bible there will time come a time again when Israel will be God's chosen and redeemed people in the last times. But until that time we are God's Israel. We are the redeemed. We are the to be what Israel was always to be, which is a shining light on a hill that everyone looks at us and goes, I want what they got. That's what we are to be shining. They're supposed to look at Kevin and go, man, I want what he's got. Whatever he's got going on, I want that. Because I should be living a, an abundant life with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I wish I could say I'm doing that all the time. But I'm not. I fail. I'm, I'm faulty. I get in a pit. And sometimes I find it hard to dig out. And that is the problem. I'm always trying to dig out. I'm trying to dig out. Not, I'm saying, God, I can't get out of here. Help me out. I'm trying to dig out. We're trying to dig out. Don't be like me. Don't be like me. Don't be a, you know, if you're a man, go, well, I'm a man and I can get out of this myself. No, you can't. You can't. The pit's too deep. You gotta reach our hand up and say, Jesus, pull me out of this pit, please. You know, we read about Joseph in the, in the pit. He couldn't get out. God provided a way out. He'll do the same for me and for you. All we have to do is trust Him. That's all we have to do. Trust Him. And trust in Him alone. Not in my own abilities. Not in my own strengths but in God and God alone will I be delivered. And I can sit and wait just like the children of Israel were at the end of the book of Genesis, waiting for God to fulfill His promise. They didn't have 430 good years there waiting on God to fulfill His promise. They sold themselves into slavery 
and they struggled and they had hard times. We can expect the same in our lives. We're going to struggle and we're going to have hard times. But we need to always keep our eyes on God's promise. Always look up for our help and quit trying to dig ourselves out. But let him lift us up and lift us out. God bless you. Have a great day. Uh, ask God to help you if you haven't already today. You need his help today just like I do. Have a great day.